week, it turned out to be in the parliament, 37 members decamped to the main opposition party and the 2014 budget finally arrives at the National Assembly. This is the Gavo Amlan Re Lassisi. Welcome. Now, the 2014 budget that has been awaited for months now has finally been received by both chambers. That was an event that caught some of us by surprise. It was presented by the Minister of Finance. And the dynamics of the House of Representatives has changed as 37 members defect from the ruling party in the House to the opposition party. We have all that for you. Let's start with the report of the House Committee on Aviation. The House of Representatives has urged President Goodluck Jonathan to review the continued engagement of the Minister of Aviation, Ms. Stella Odua, for contravening the Appropriation Act 2013. According to the report, the Minister contravened the Appropriation Act by exceeding the Ministry's approval limit of 100 million naira by the purchase of 54 vehicles at 643 million naira. This was a major part of the resolutions adopted by the lawmakers after considering the report of the House Committee on Aviation on the purchase of two armored cars for 255 million naira. The report said the two BMW armored cars procured in the process were neither provided for in the Appropriation Act of 2013, nor was due process followed in the procurement. From the submissions made from, from them, we, the following deductions can be made. One, that there is no provision for an armored vehicle in Nigerian law for an honorable minister. Number two, that the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority with approval of the honorable minister for aviation purchased 54 operational vehicles, including two bulletproof BMW armored cars, valued at, uh, all the vehicles valued at 643 million Naira, 88,250 copper, which were procured by NCAA. Number three, that the said two BMW cars were imported illegally into Nigeria as documents to show their waiver cannot be substantiated by either the Customs or Ministry of Finance. Number four, that the purchase of the operational vehicles including the two BMW armored cars, was not authorized by any appropriation law. Neither was the approval by the Honorable Minister for the NCA to procure the cars approved by, by the Federal Executive Council. Considering the amount involved, this act violated Section 22C of the Public Procurement Act 2009. It can be de deduced that NCA has not been complying with Fiscal Responsibility Act on internally generated revenue. Again, this is violation of Section 1172 of the Federal Republic of Nigeria's Financial Regulations, 2009, which provides as follows, and I quote, should implementation of a directive from a political health result in an unauthorized expenditure and or contravene external regulations, the accounting officer shall be responsible for the unauthorized expenditure unless a report had been made by the accounting officer to the head of service in the case of ministries, stroke extra ministerial offices, or to the minister in the case of parastatus. The House has also directed the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority to terminate all transactions and loan agreements entered into on the matter. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission are also to investigate the discrepancies in the chassis number DW68032 of one of the vehicles inspected by the committee. But in a swift reaction, the minister has expressed his disappointment with the position of the lawmakers. In a release signed by the Special Assistant to the Minister on Media, Joe Obi, which reads, we are shocked and disappointed that in spite of representations and evidences provided by the Aviation Minister, Princess Stella Odua, and all invited stakeholders on the matter, the House would reach conclusions that have only confirmed that there was a hidden agenda in the entire exercise from the beginning. The action of the committee and the House were premeditated with the sole aim of casting aspersion on the person and office of the Aviation Minister. We reiterate that the recommendations of the committee do not reflect the actual course of proceedings at the hearing. 
The release says the minister remains focused on implementing the transformation agenda of the federal government. This week, the 2014 budget estimate was finally laid before both chambers of the National Assembly. After several disagreements, the Senate and House of Representatives agreed to leave the oil benchmark at $77.5 per barrel. This position was approved after both chambers received and adopted the report of the conference committee on the 2014 to 2016 medium term expenditure framework fiscal strategy paper. The House resolves to receive and adopt the conference report on the 2014-2016 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I so move. The passage of the medium term expenditure framework paved way for the lawmakers to receive a 2014 appropriation bill. At the same time, the lawmakers received a letter from President Goodluck Jonathan requesting that the Minister of Finance, Dr. Ngozi Okonja Iwala, should be allowed to lay the 2014 budget proposal before both chambers of the National Assembly. Pursuant to the provision of Section 81, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended, I have delegated the Coordinating Minister for the Economy and Minister of Finance to lay before the distinguished Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the 2014 budget estimates. Please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurances of my highest consideration. The request was subsequently approved, and Thursday, December 19, was approved for Dr. Okonjo Iwala to lay the budget before the lawmakers. We suspend all relevant rules to enable the coordinating minister of the economy and her entourage in admittance into the chambers tomorrow to enable her to lay the 2014 appropriation bill. I so move. Consequent upon rules 113 and 139, the lawmakers received a delegation from the president led by the Minister of Finance into plenary session starting with the Senate. Unlike previous budget presentation by the president, the finance minister laid the 2014 appropriation bill before the lawmakers. However, mild drama ensued in the House of Representatives after the budget was laid. The delegation of ministers was subsequently discharged. The minister gave the details of the budget to journalists. Now, in terms of total amount, the aggregate expenditure, excluding uh, of the shop, is 1.642 trillion naira. And uh, federal government budget uh, expected revenue is 3.73 trillion naira. So, the fiscal deficit is 1.9% uh, of GDP, just slightly up from last year, which was 1.85% from last year's budget. On the show P, yes, I have an idea. You just give me a moment so I make sure I get the numbers right. I believe that the show P budget is uh, 68.37 billion uh, naira for the federal government. One of the reasons we have last year, the capital budget is 1.1 trillion naira. It's about 27% of the budget and the recurrent is about 72%. Uh, what was the implementation level of the last of the budget? Of um, the previous budget, yes. I believe we released 64% of, of that budget. The aggregate expenditure for the budget is put at 4.642 trillion naira. This excludes the subsidy investment and empowerment program, SHOP, which is put at 268.37 billion naira for the federal government. The expected revenue is 3.73 trillion naira. The capital budget is 1.1 trillion naira, which is about 27% of the budget, and the recurrent is about 72%. The fiscal deficit is 1.9% of GDP and the oil benchmark is $77.5 per barrel. The minister explained the reduction in the figure budget proposal from 2013. For the lawmakers, the presentation of the budget by the Minister of Finance is legal. The Minister of Finance is qualified to lay that we have a tradition 
uh, ceremonial tradition where the Senate president with the senators comes down to the House of Representatives chambers and we uh, sit together and the president comes in to lay. It's tradition, but it's not constitutional. What happened today is the constitutional provision. What he has done is not in any way a disregard to anybody or violation of the constitution. So sentiments should be separated from, from the provisions of the constitution. So they should have sentiment and law or the constitutions are not the same, they are, not, they are two different things altogether. At this moment, is concerned about the timing of the presentation. The whole timetable of the budgeting process needs to be looked into. I'm not happy as a parliamentarian that we are just passing the budget uh, towards the end of the year, in, the, in December. This could have been done two months before now. Why? Because of disagreement on benchmark pricing. Uh, to the, to, I would love a situation whereby benchmark macroeconomic indices should be agreed on much early in the year. I would like to see more of planning for this economy because of the nature of our resources. MTF controversy, the benchmark controversy. Again, it will be very wonderful if our MTF you know, takes its, its root in, in plans rather than it just exists. Well. And because the whole debate about MTF is always around benchmarks, and there's more to this economy than benchmarks. Federal lawmakers have proceeded on Christmas and New Year holidays to resume on January 14, 2014. Only then will they begin work on the 2014 budget. From one nation to another, there must be a meeting point. Their ideas may be different, but they must work to agree on what's best for the people. Diplomatic Channel untangles the discussions to bring out what's really important. Because it is our world, and it's our right to know how their decisions affect us. Those who left in the dark, be the first to know. Get the latest news and developing stories anytime. Anywhere on your mobile device. Log on to m.channelstv.com and click on the Channels TV logo. Channels Television, the news at your fingertips. As we wait for the National Assembly to begin work on the 2014 appropriation bill, the question now will be when will this bill be passed and when will it be signed into law? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Our next report features a rare open confrontation between the federal lawmakers and a minister of the Federal Republic. It was a meeting scheduled to discuss the state of the economy from January to date. With members of the House of Representatives Committee listening attentively, the Minister of Finance started with a short appeal. I do apologize ahead of time. Uh, I'm a bit ill, so I'll do the best I can. You want on the issue of the, perhaps you can start with the report on the economy. And I'll try to go along as much as I can. Uh, maybe the Accountant General can do the representation on the revenues and the DG budgets on budget implementations. You know you are not feeling fine. We can also concede. We will present these questions to you. We will also give members of the press these 50 questions. We will give you time to give us a written explanation and answers to those questions and also arrange for you to come back and appear for this committee. When you are strong, I'm very energetic. But the minister's insistence that she was ready did not move the committee. Okay, Go and give us a written, but I'm here. Go and give us a written explanation. Distinguished chair, you gave me, you asked, you, I'm minister. the one. I, I can answer listen, the questions, I have them. Listen, you can decide what will happen only in the Ministry of Finance, and perhaps the ministers you coordinate, but not in the Committee of Finance. You will go, give us a written explanation after two weeks. We will take your written explanation, study it, then we will invite you for a proper engagement. That's the rule of the committee. Thank you for coming. Honorable, distinguished, uh, sorry, Thank Honorable you. Chair, 
Kavod. I know you. 